Welcome to week five in our journaling course. I'm Paul Clark, your host. How are you going with communing with God and establishing boundaries? Over the last few weeks, I've given you a way to talk and listen to God. I've said, if God speaks, this is very serious. People do terrible things in God's name. I've said we need boundaries to protect us and others. Boundaries like these words we're hearing are always our words that God might use. The Ten Commandments. The words that we hear should smell like Jesus because Jesus is the Word of God. That introduces this next lesson. How do you learn Jesus' words? If we need to recognize his voice, how do we get to know his voice? Well, the Gospels and the Bible are where we meet Jesus. If we really want to develop a relationship with God, you need to know Jesus through the Bible. Here are 10 statements from the Bible that give us a glimpse of what God is like and how he speaks to us. And some of them are from Jesus. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. Isaiah 43, 1. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Hebrews 13, 5. Neither do I condemn you. Now go and leave your life of sin. John 8, 11. Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be open to you. Matthew 7, 7. I have come to give you life in all its abundance. John 10, 10. If you refuse to listen to the cry of the poor, your own cry for help will not be heard. Ooh, Proverbs 21, 13. Whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. Matthew 20, 26. One night the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision. Do not be afraid. Keep on speaking. Do not be silent, for I am with you. And no one will lay a hand on you, because I have many people in this city. Acts 18 verse 9. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Acts 2 21. And for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. John 3, 16 and 17. How are you going to get to know this voice in your life? Quite seriously, in parallel with this course, if you have never done it before, read a gospel. Matthew, Mark, Luke or John. Find a time and place and simply read a chapter a day. I used to read a chapter before I slept each night. You might download the YouVersion Bible and get it to read to you or flag you each morning so you might remember to read a chapter. Maybe grab a friend and read it together over a morning coffee a couple of mornings a week. I hope there's some options on the website where you found this to get you into the Bible. Here's why it, it's so important. Religion gets smashed in today's world, and rightly so. It's done some terrible things. Jesus and his closest disciples put some checks into Scripture to make sure you don't use religion to be an idiot. Jesus' three closest disciples were Peter, James, and John. And James wrote, 
religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. James wrote, whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. If you're hating on someone, you're on the wrong track. That's not godly. In Matthew, we read another of Jesus' disciples. Jesus called the disciples together. They were fighting about who was the greatest. And he said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lorded over them and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. If your faith is leading to power and control, curb it. I want you to spend some time journaling again, writing, hey God, this is how I feel and listening for what God might say to you. Now, sometimes at this point, people are beginning to run out of things to write or say to God. It's I've kind of told God everything I've got. I've, I've got nothing left. And maybe that's not you. Maybe you've got a hundred pressing questions that um, you're still going to God with. But it's often when you've run out of the surface things that you start to go deeper. So even though you might think, oh, this is going to be hard, press on. It's like brainstorming. They say, you know, the, the easy ideas come first. It's when you've run out of ideas that the really good ones come. So press on and use some of what I've just said and read to you as stimulus. God, do I use you to control others? Have I got hate in my heart? Why do I dislike some people? Is my religious beliefs constructive, creative, or destructive? Give it a go. Fill in the reflection, and I'll see you next time.